Good morning and welcome to silly o'clock on a winter's morning. It's not too bad, that's only six o'clock. I am with my mate Ben and we are going to go to Eastbourne for we've decided we'd like to have a look at reflections on what could be a rather miserable grey morning. But that doesn't stop us getting potential. Now Ben's bought himself a new thing. He likes a thing. It's a hand warmer, a charcoal hand warmer. So he's standing outside right now. I've got to show you this. Apparently it's light now. Now this being such a grey day, I'm anticipating some juicy long exposures and maybe something with a bit of splash of colour. <laughs> calf. Who knew this calf would go so far? So this little device is going to rescue your fingers. I'm hoping that this is going to keep my fingers warm. Welcome to Eastbourne, famous for, amongst other things, its pier. It's quite a nice architectural pier, this one. One of those ones that kind of looks quite delicate. Eastbourne is a town on the south coast of England, approximately two and a half hours drive away from central London. It's the most eastern end of the South Downs National Park and the South Downs Way. Now we are here at low-ish tide and what that means is if I can get down onto the beach I should be able to get a bit of a reflection uh, which I've never got before. So there is a bit of a grey morning we've got some interest in the sky which might be quite useful. So it is cold but it's not windy so it's not bracing. I have double jacketed, I have double trousered but actually, I'm not really sure I needed it. I just had to remind Ben that he doesn't need to walk across my scene, although I have got two people who are about to do exactly that. Ideally, what I want is to be able to get some reflections in the wet sand of that loveliness behind me. <sighs> but I don't want footprints across it. Just for information, Ben's been loaned a camera to have a play with for this session. The full frame equivalent for that lens is 24 mil. What I'm looking for is to get reflections. So, sort of here. I suspect that might be a three by one, unless I want to do something dramatic with the sky. From where I'm standing, I've got not the most attractive thing in front of me. Let me just show you. So I've got this going down to actually quite a, an unattractive, muddy section. So although I'm actually getting quite good reflections, what I don't want is to get this chaotic bit in the foreground, because it just, upsets me feng shui. So I'm just mooching around to see if there is any more interesting foreground. So yes, okay, I've got the reflection. That's fine. It's a little bit boring, but it's fine. But just to see whether or not there's anything else we can do. I like a more acute angle to this pier. This is just like a side on profile, which isn't massively doing it for me. The ones that I like are kind of more, let's reach out into the distance uh, with a pier. So a day like today screams conversion to black and white or at least a desaturation so it looks a little bit more like that. What I'm tending to do a bit more now is desaturate the blues in some of my shots um, and then perhaps crank up the saturation a little bit to give it a little bit more drama. But there's a real fine balance between losing the personality of a shot and having that effect. I normally have a Nissi filter holder uh, and that's partly because it's got a built-in polarizer and then teaming that with my Lee filters that I normally have. But I decided there must be a slightly easier way at certain times. So I'm going to be trialing today a set of magnetic filters. So it comes in an 82 mil and I have the converter that takes it down to 77. For protective purposes, it has a magnetic shield on the front and the back and it just sits on the front and you can twiddle away using the two filters and obviously tighten up so that you can uh, ensure that they grip properly. This being winter, Eastbourne is known for its starling murmurations, rather like Brighton is. I was hoping that I'd have a chance to shoot some of these, but they are one more spectacular in the evening where they start to dance around before they come in to roost. But also in the morning, they just tend to leave which is what I've just seen. It took about five seconds. One of the things I'm nervous about with this magnetic filter is it's likely to fall off. It did when I had to go the other day, just a bit of a play around. Now I'm on sand, so that's not too bad at the moment, 
but if I'm on any other surface that could be really problematic. So that is what I'm nervous about. More starlings disappearing off into the distance. They just don't really do their dancing in the mornings. Ben, do you reckon we could get permission to come and shoot starlings here in the next couple of weeks? I know we don't ask permission. Do you think we could go and shoot starlings here in the next couple of weeks? Yes, I'll allow that. Thank you. <laughs> Ben has just informed me that with his gorgeous camera, he's limited to 24mm, which is why he keeps getting in my shots all the time. Just saying. <laughs> no, sorry, but this is the thing, it falls off. That's what I was really worried about. Well, that's a touch embarrassing. I've just realised why I've lost my uh, filter a couple of times, and I'm a plank. I had two rings on it, so therefore it lost its magnetic field because it's an 82 millimeter and I'm on a 77 camera. I didn't twig that the 82 thingy came with it, so I stuck a 77 on and neutralized the magnetic bit. That's really badly phrased, but you kind of get that it's me and not the product. Now I've shot this before at high tide and I confess that I do prefer it at high tide. It just takes out some of the uh, scrubby foreground here. Um, I will show you those shots because I quite like one of them in particular. Now this high key ultra long exposure was shot on a typical winter's day, dull with no interest in the sky, unlike today. I just thought the conditions suited this style of editing rather well. Now contrast that with this shot where I wanted to exploit the opulence of the gold and contrast that with the beautiful greens in the water. The leading line of the sea defence also works quite well here. Now this slightly less acute angle, more sort of face on, is more akin to what I was looking at this particular morning. It's a touch too postcardy for my tastes. Well, now that I've actually worked out how to use this filter, it's actually quite good, but I do want to do a really long one. So I'm gonna have to break out the other filter system. I have to say it's gonna take me a little while, I think, to properly transition and have the confidence in this. May I step into your scene? You may step into my scene. <laughs> what impressive courtesy. Mind you, he had only come with one lens, which meant he had no option but to step in my scene. What a professional. Now this impressive kit that he's playing with doesn't allow him to use filters. Oh dear. Ben's now bored, because he can't do long exposures. I can. What, silly camera? He may have the most amazing camera ever, but I can shoot long exposures. I'm gonna just start a fire, because this is not working. Product defect. I need to keep my hands warm to make art. Turns out it was a damp fuel issue. I'm sure we've all had one of those. Well, we have come half a mile up the road and we're going to shoot the Towner Gallery. It's well known for its really colourful frontage. In fact, I believe there's a shot in the UK Landscape Photographer of the Year that included this. It's really quite an, a striking building. Now, what you need is somebody in bright clothing to walk past it. It's a Sunday morning. There's nobody much about. I'm in bright clothing. <sighs> might have to get inventive. As the facade might suggest, this is a contemporary art gallery. It was founded in 1923 as an art gallery for the people and it's free to enter. Well, it's going to be about uh, finding the right angle, I think. I like that sweep down. Don't want any sky. Here it goes. So what I'm trying to do is to make sure that I get and it bends feet in this, otherwise it looks a bit odd. I like the building without, but it does need somebody in exactly where Ben is standing. So I'm gonna go and model in a minute, but I've just gotta get it set up right. Right, so what we're doing now is we're just trying to film something so I don't have my feet chopped off. But I'm not really sure it's gonna work. I'm standing in the doorway of this magnificent building. Well, it is a great building. You do need a person walking through it though to give it a sense of scale. One of the benefits of having a colourful jacket is that you can actually make sure that you're in a complementary colour scheme section when the photo is taken. Now it's worth noting that the tilt shift lens that Ben is using is going to be far better than the one that I have. When I am looking up at buildings, my lines start to converge and I have some peculiar angles coming in. His lens will stop that happening, although his is fixed. So swings and roundabouts. It's also worth noting that the camera that he is using is on loan to him and it's worth about five times the value of the camera that I'm using. His shots had better be 
five times better. Time to trundle back home now and have a look and see if I've got anything that I can use for this video. Now what you're seeing here is the face of a woman who is absolutely oblivious to the fact that her memory card's been corrupted. She has nothing. Nada. But luckily, she has a friend who has loaned a great camera, who is happy to provide a shot for illustrative purposes. The shot is Ben's, the crop is mine. Thank you for joining me today. Wherever I am next time, I look forward to being with you. Take care. Where are we going? Okay, I know, because I've got the map in front of me, but it's not easy. And several people have driven on the wrong side of the road, including me.